The entire world is talking about AI tools like ChatGPT and Midjourney because they're disrupting every industry in a big way. But there's another AI breakthrough that's happening right now, and it's even bigger because it affects everything that we rely on today, including the computers that power ChatGPT and Midjourney. This is AI building AI, and best of all, it's a breakthrough that we can invest in. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. A couple weeks ago, NVIDIA held their latest GTC conference, where they talked about breakthroughs in AI like ChatGPT and the hardware that it runs on. They talked about their A100 GPUs, which are designed specifically for machine learning and deep learning applications. They also showcased their new H100 chips, which they're shipping to some of the biggest companies in the world as we speak. NVIDIA's H100 chips are about nine times faster for AI training. For example, when Tesla passes labeled data to their full self-driving computers to train them to drive better. But the H100 is a whopping 30 times faster for large inference models like GPT-4, which is what powers ChatGPT, as well as the diffusion models behind Dolly and Midjourney. That's a massive speed up, and we haven't even gotten to the breakthrough yet. These GPUs can be linked together to form even more powerful systems at virtually any scale. For example, eight of these H100 chips can be connected to form a DGX H100 server system. And if you combine nine of these DGX H100 server systems together, you get a DGX pod. But it doesn't stop there. You can link 32 of these DGX pods together to create a super pod, which is one of the most powerful computing systems in the world. Given how fast ChatGPT reached 100 million users and how many businesses have already been built on top of it, I think that every cloud computing platform from Microsoft Azure to Amazon Web Services is going to need huge amounts of these H100 server systems over the next few years. And that's where the problems begin. Chip design and manufacturing today is fundamentally limited by our ability to etch tiny patterns of features onto silicon wafers with extreme precision. And even before that step, we're limited by how fast we can calculate the right patterns in the first place. That's where the breakthrough comes in. Here's a quick three minute clip from NVIDIA's GTC keynote, where CEO Jensen Wong explains the mind blowing process of making advanced chips like their H100s, the limitations of that process today, and NVIDIA's crazy solution. Then I'll explain why this breakthrough is much bigger than he's letting on. Don't sleep on this. The chip industry, is the foundation of nearly every industry. Chip manufacturing demands extreme precision, producing features 1,000 times smaller than a bacterium. Lithography, the process of creating patterns on a wafer, is the beginning of the chip manufacturing process and consists of two stages, photo mask making and pattern projection. The photo mask is like a stencil of a chip. Light is blocked or passed through the mask to the wafer to create the pattern. The light is produced by the ASML EUV Extreme Ultraviolet Lithography System. Each system is more than a quarter of a billion dollars. ASML EUV uses a radical way to create light. Laser pulses firing 50,000 times a second at a drop of tin, vaporizing it, creating a plasma that emits 13 and a half nanometer EUV light. Multi-layer mirrors guide the light to the mask to create finer features down to three nanometers. The step before lithography is equally miraculous. Computational lithography applies inverse physics algorithms to predict the patterns on the mask that will produce the final patterns on the wafer. In fact, the patterns on the mask do not resemble the final features at all. Computational lithography simulates Maxwell's equations of the behavior of the light passing through optics and interacting with photoresists. Computational lithography is the largest computation workload in chip design and manufacturing, consuming tens of billions of CPU hours annually. Massive data centers run 24 seven to create reticles used in lithography systems. These data centers are part of the nearly $200 billion annual CapEx invested by chip manufacturers. NVIDIA today is announcing KuLitho, a library for computational lithography. KuLitho a massive body of work that has taken nearly four years and with close collaboration with TSMC, ASML, and Synopsys, accelerates computational lithography by over 40 times. There are 89 reticles for the NVIDIA H100. Running on CPUs, a single reticle currently takes two weeks to process. KuLitho, running on GPUs, can process a reticle 
in a single eight-hour shift. TSMC can reduce their 40,000 CPU servers used for computational lithography by accelerating with Kuletho on just 500 DGX H100 systems, reducing power from 35 megawatts to just 5 megawatts. With Kuletho, TSMC can reduce prototype cycle time, increase throughput, and reduce the carbon footprint of their manufacturing and prepare for 2 nanometer and beyond. TSMC will be qualifying Kuletho for production starting in June. So computational lithography is how we calculate what each mask needs to look like so that when light passes through it and the reticle below it, it etches the right features onto the wafer. For example, there are 89 different masks and reticles for the H100 chip, and each one of them takes about two weeks to calculate on current CPUs. Those two weeks are a serious bottleneck because even a slight change in the thickness of the silicon would change what the light needs to do to etch the right features onto its surface, which means you need to recalculate the mask. And because there are 89 of them, a change to one mask could mean more changes to other masks, which would really slow down the whole fabrication process. NVIDIA's big breakthrough here is working with TSMC and ASML to turn these mask design problems that currently run on CPUs into imaging problems, which can be parallelized and ran on GPUs. That change reduces the time to calculate these masks by 40x, from two weeks to a little over eight hours, and the power needed to calculate them from 35 megawatts to just five. That's a massive savings in both time and money. And speaking of saving time and money, Moomoo is a trading app that helps you find great investments and execute your strategies. There are no commissions, no account minimums, and no hidden fees. They have a very powerful stock screener that lets you find stocks based on more than 100 different indicators. For example, I want to see all US semiconductor stocks with a price to earnings ratio of less than 15 and operating revenue growth of over 30%. With just a few button presses, the screener shows me the results and the values for every field that I screen by. Talk about saving time and money. This is a very cool way to discover great stocks at great prices, but that's not even the best part. Right now, Moomoo is giving away up to 15 free stocks, each valued at up to $2,000. All you have to do is sign up with my link and keep your account above $1,000 for at least 60 days to claim your 15 free stocks. This is a limited time offer, so go download the app using my link in the description below today. All right, let's talk about why this breakthrough is such a big deal. The way Jensen described it, Nvidia turning this mask calculation problem from a CPU problem to a GPU problem lets TSMC go down from say 40,000 server CPUs to just 500 DGX H100 systems, or about 4,000 GPUs. Doing that means using just one seventh the power which means they can reduce their carbon footprint and blah, blah, blah. But that's not what I think is going to happen. That's because these chip boundaries have already invested hundreds of billions of dollars into these data centers, and they want to get the most out of their investments. So instead of doing the same amount of work in less time with less power, we should think of this as up to a 280x boost in resources, since they can use seven times more GPUs for the same amount of power, and using GPUs lets them calculate 40 times more masks in the same amount of time, all without needing to upgrade any of their actual fabrication equipment. So what if chip makers use those resources to make the same amount of masks, but at much finer resolutions? that could bring us even closer to one nanometer chip fabrication processes. I'm sure there are thousands of other improvements that need to be made before we can go to one nanometer chip production, like making these motors much more sensitive and changing the actual EUV laser. But let's focus on some more obvious benefits. This breakthrough lets TSMC increase its throughput. That means more chips hitting the market, which means lower costs for each chip and fewer chip shortages in the future which ultimately means lower prices and or higher margins for smartphones, tablets, laptops, desktops, and software services with large hardware costs. I'm excited to see what that means for companies like Apple, who make most of their revenue on hardware, or companies like Tesla, who reportedly signed a huge deal to use TSMC's five and four nanometer processes to design their next generation FSD chips. But it's not just about more of the same chips because being able to design 40 times more masks also means being able to handle up to 40 times more chip designs for the same amount of power, or at least until they hit the next bottleneck in the chip fabrication process. So let's say that we can just have four times as many chip designs before we hit another roadblock. All of a sudden, we can build more specialized chips for big chunks of applications, 
Maybe the best chip designs for genome sequencing and protein folding are different from the ones powering the diffusion models behind Midjourney and Dolly. Or maybe the best chip designs for mining cryptocurrencies and running blockchains are different from the ones powering online games and streaming services. Instead of all of those applications competing for the same kinds of resources thanks to supply constraints, companies can actually design and manufacture more specialized application-specific chips. That would have saved NVIDIA and their customers a lot of heartache just a couple years ago, when crypto miners bought up all of the high-end GPUs, which drove up the prices for gamers and messed up NVIDIA's revenue numbers in a big way. But it's not just about NVIDIA. Amazon has been designing their own Graviton processors for AWS servers for years now. AWS powers over one-third of the entire internet today. They recently unveiled their latest Graviton 3E chips, which are designed for heavier workloads like big data processing and real-time video streaming. Amazon's chips focus on energy efficiency, which lowers the cost of their data centers and their cloud services, which ultimately lowers the costs for the consumers of those services or increases profit margins for the companies providing them. Or, you know, for Amazon directly. Not just that, but Amazon's homegrown chips sends the signal to other cloud providers that homegrown chips are an option for them as well. For example, Microsoft has already showcased some ARM-based CPUs that will compete directly with Amazon's offerings. They've partnered with a small California-based startup called Ampere, who's producing their Ultra CPUs to Microsoft Azure. These chips are built on TSMC's 7 and 5 nanometer processes, so they're in a perfect spot to benefit from this mask computing breakthrough as well. And to bring things full circle, Azure uses NVIDIA's chips to run OpenAI's ChatGPT and their large language models like GPT-4. And now, those same chips are helping ASML and TSMC build even more AI chips even faster, which means more availability for AI training and usage, which means more productivity and solutions to harder problems in the future, some of which will continue to benefit chip manufacturing, which speeds up this whole virtuous cycle. And I have no doubt that NVIDIA is already working on using AI to tackle the next bottleneck in chip manufacturing and the one after that and the one after that, which will make the entire semiconductor industry move faster and faster. This is AI building AI. Let me know in the comments whether you think that's exciting or terrifying. But there's one more huge disruption that you need to know about, so make sure to check out this episode next. And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That lets me know to put out more research like this. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.